our body is bombarded by several pathogens every day. And these pathogens include viruses, bacteria, fungi, helminth, etc. And in this video, we would look at how our body deals with bacterial infection. So stay tuned till the end of this video because we would learn in details that how our immune system respond against a bacterial infection. In order to understand this phenomena better, let us take a real-time example. So let's say you have accidentally stepped on a rusty nail and this rusty nail has breached your uh, first line of defense that is your physical barrier, the skin. With this rusty nail, there was a lot of bacteria which has invaded your body. So right now, body's immune system should recognize and fight back these bacteria. So first line of defense is the innate immune cells. Innate immune cells would then and there go to the site of infection or site of damage and try to recognize these bacteria. The major immune, innate immune cells which takes part uh, to fight bacterial infection are neutrophil, macrophages, dendritic cell, etc. Now, these innate immune components try to engulf these bacteria and eliminate them. Not only that, these macrophages or dendritic cells, they would secrete chemical messengers known as chemokine, which would attract many more macrophages or innate immune cells to the site of infection. And it would mount a stronger immune response against these invaders. Now, let us look at a particular dendritic cell. The dendritic cell, it's a phagocytotic cell, just like the macrophage. So it would engulf the bacteria, and then the bacterial endosome would fuse with lysosomes. And eventually, the bacteria would be damaged and neutralized inside these phagolysosomes. The debris or these components would be eventually displayed on the dendritic cell surface on class 2 MHC molecules. Using class 2 MHC molecules, dendritic cells present these antigens to T helper cells. Now dendritic cells would now mobilize towards the army base camp that is the lymph node. Now inside the lymph node there are dedicated regions where you would find T cells and B cells. These dendritic cells can activate T cells and thereby activating B cells or depending upon the bacteria, the bacteria can itself activate the B cell directly via endotoxins. We would learn about both. So in this particular example, a T cell is activated by the dendritic cell and now it would activate several B cells. When the B cells are activated, they would eventually become plasma cells which would generate antibody. And for long-term defense, many of these B cells would proliferate inside the germ uh, germinal center and ultimately they would also differentiate into antibody secreting plasma cells. So there could be activation of B cells either in a T cell independent manner or a dependent manner. So many bacteria has endotoxins, which are part of their cell wall or cell membrane component, like, such as LPS. So these endotoxins can activate B cells without the help of any T cell. No matter how the B cell would be activated, the ultimate goal is to proliferate and make antibodies. So the B cells would proliferate and increase in number Ultimately, these naive B cells would be gaining experience and ultimately become plasma cells, which would secrete different isotypes of antibody against that particular bacteria. Now, once these antibodies are produced, these antibodies can coat the bacteria and opsonize these bacteria, or other word is to neutralize these bacteria. So, it would make it difficult for these bacteria to affect other cell types in the body. Moreover, there are many cell types in the immune system such as macrophages, neutrophils, dendritic cells or NK cells which has receptors against these FC portion of these antibodies. 
so they can bind to that particular antibody and engulf the pathogen and this is known as antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity by this particular response body can fight back bacteria now apart from these kind of responses body can also fight by producing complement proteins these complement proteins would also coat the bacteria and opsonize them many complement proteins associated with each other and forms a membrane attack complex which lead to fluid leakage now this would lead to a osmolarity disbalance and bursting of the bacteria moreover these complement proteins could also work like a anaphylatoxin these anaphylatoxins are soluble molecule which can work like chemoattractant and overall evoke a inflammatory response so these anaphylatoxins help in immune cell extravasation such as this particular neutrophil would be now moving through this blood capillary and it would reach the tissue space to fight the bacteria and this kind of chemoattractive signal is really important for engaging more and more immune components against that particular bacteria so in this video we learned that antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity complement mediated lysis or generating antibody are several ways by which our body fight back bacterial infection but in the next video we would talk about how bacteria can act in a clever fashion and prevent um, destruction by our immune system so stay tuned till the next video but if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and you can also support my uh, journey in patreon and you can access my courses in an academy which is india's biggest learning platform and using my code ap10 you can get a 10% discount and do let me know in the comment how you like my videos thank you